I want to show you a tool to help beginning students design programs systematically. This tool is called Beginning Student Tables, and here's how it works. Suppose we want a function that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius. We write down the name of the function, the signature of the function, and the purpose of the function. But what is the formula? Before we develop the general formula, we should first come up with some specific examples of the function at work. In other words, we should put down some unit tests made of inputs and outputs. For example, we know that 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 0 degrees Celsius, and 212 degrees Fahrenheit is 100 degrees Celsius. Looking at these examples, our first attempt at a general formula might be to take the input f and subtract 32. This works for the first example, but not the second. But we're getting close. We can take this intermediate result and divide it by 1.8. Now we've got it. The check marks show which results match the expected outputs we want on the right. Our goal is to make a column that has check marks all the way down. We can add more examples to take our formula and test it further. By the way, this tool is on the web, so you could try it out yourself. Just to give you some context, when our students encounter this tool, they might be complete newcomers to computer science, but they have already been exposed to the syntax of a minimal programming language in which all function application is notated prefix using parentheses. We also introduce our students to a step-by-step -step process of program design where before they define a function, we require them to write down the signature of the function, the purpose of the function, and some tests for the function. This required design process is reflected and enforced in the Beginning Student Tables tool, even though the way we currently teach our course uses a more conventional development environment most of the time. What if we have a more complicated problem where we need to use different formulas under different conditions? Suppose we want a function that returns the larger of two numbers, x and y. Again, we write down the name of the function, the signature of the function, and the purpose of the function. We also write some examples. However, it is clear that neither the formula x nor the formula y will give us what we want all the time. Instead, we need to check if x is less than y. When the programmer enters a formula whose results are all true or false, Beginning Student Tables treats it as a condition and allows the programmer to enter formulas under the condition. These formulas are only evaluated on those rows where the conditions above them are true. So the programmer can try out many conditions and look for formulas that are reliable in each condition and cover all possible test cases. Just as multiple formulas are allowed, multiple conditions are allowed, and they may overlap. By the way, when we get a table we like, we can export it as code. For bigger programming tasks, a formula can invoke a table. Suppose we want to find the larger of three numbers. We can write a formula that takes three numbers and finds the largest number using the larger that we already have. But there's a difference between invoking a function like less than and invoking a table like larger. Invoking larger is merely looking up the inputs 1 and 2 in the table that we already have, so we have to add those inputs and specify the expected output. And again, for the outer call to larger. This behavior prompts the programmer to write enough tests for a helper function like larger, and also tells the programmer to trust the helper function larger even before its definition is finished. These ingredients together guide the programmer to design recursive functions. Suppose we want to compute the factorial of a natural number. Well, here are some examples. Now, because a natural number is either 0 or 1 plus another natural number, we know we probably want the conditions n equals 0 and n greater than 0. Moreover, if n greater than 0, then we probably want n minus 1 and its factorial. Looking at what we have, and what we want, we discover that we can multiply what we have by n to get what we want. Note that again, invoking fact is merely looking up the input in the table. So if we leave out the expected output for 4, the test for 5 complains. And if we leave out the test for 4 altogether, the test for 5 also complains.
we call this behavior pseudo recursion. This generalizes to mutual recursion where tables like even and odd invoke each other. Even though I've only shown numbers and booleans, we can also program with strings like to concatenate them, images like to animate them, and lists like to sort them. Again, our tool is called Beginning Student Tables, and you can try it out yourself on the web.